Welcome to the next video in the systems programming video series. We're continuing with chapter three section, uh, and I'm skipping section 3.2 because that's mostly just sort of a reference for the various commands of GDB. So we can refer back to it later if we need it, but I'm moving over to an introduction to Valgrind in section 3.3. Now it gives a bit of a discussion here. Uh, I think it's a, a good thing to read, but uh, I usually like to just move right over to something that we can actually work with and see it perform. So that would be here using memcheck. We can come over here and grab <coughs> the code for this uh, val grind bad prog. So, so we can come over here and we can add this file val grind bad prog c we can paste it in save it come over to the make file might as well okay let's save that uh, looks like everything's saved let's clear this it's a little cluttered and call make clean cleans out the directory and then we can make val grind bad prog grade it compiles dot slash oops val, val grind bad prog and a uh, very weird uh stuff uh, followed by a uh, core dump so so clearly a program that is going wrong and what uh, we are encouraged to do to investigate the error, and certainly we could use GDB, no reason not to, but there's some reason to think that, you know, with the weird issues, you know, like just weird values showing up in variables, we might suspect that there is some kind of a uh, heap memory problem, right? That maybe the values getting assigned to arrays, in this case, uh, strings, right, character arrays, um, might write some, some, you know, it could be an index out of bounds where, you know, it's writing to locations in memory that it's not supposed to be going, or there might be something else uh, going on here. And we can look at the code, but uh, certainly the point of doing this is to see how Valgrind could give us some useful information. So let's uh, compile GCC with the debugging flag valgrind uh, badprog c so that's just like as in gdb but this time we're going to say valgrind dash v and apply this to a dot out and we get a whole bunch of information now you know here in the terminal uh, it's a bit of work to scroll through this sort of information dump that is fairly messy. So it might look a little nicer if instead we did what it suggests here and in fact uh, redirect this, you know, this report basically that it has generated into a text file. We can call it output.txt, we could call it anything we wanted, but here's how you do it. You tell uh, Valgrind that you want to use, uh, actually, I, what is the V flag? I don't know. Anyway. Um, a dot out as before, but this time we pipe the report into output.txt, and when we do, nothing shows up in the terminal, but this output.txt file shows up in the directory where this was called. So we open that up. It's exactly the same information, but uh, because you know it's in a text editor, it's just a little bit easier to look at. Uh, this is standard format, right? Uh, you'll see that this same repeated number uh, shows up, you know, uh, flanked by double equal signs, telling you a, uh, a process ID. Uh, knowing which process ID it is, is usually not that valuable, but just seeing that these are all grouped together under the same process ID is a helpful way of knowing that uh, even out here, they're all talking about the same uh, process. You know, so uh, memory error detector. So just a bunch of, you know, information about Valgrind here saying that we executed it on this binary file. 
uh, we have some options here uh, of what dash V is, right? We ran it with dash V. So a bunch of info, but I'm not sure that any of this info is yet very useful. This all looks like just info that you're gonna get at the start of just about any call to Valgrind. So let's scroll and scroll, and this seems to still be all under the same ID. So, you know, it's giving some warnings here, and I'm not sure exactly what that's about, but that doesn't seem like the, uh, you know, quite the error that we're looking for. It might be related. Um, another warning, another warning. Ah, here. So here seems to be where we first learn about the actual error, because it is telling us the name of some error. So everything above this line might have been related, but was a bunch of not you know, quite uh, useful information, at least not as far as I know. But this is uh, useful, right? That, that looks useful, because it's telling us the nature of the error, that there was an invalid write of size one. It first occurred you know, in a sense, in the call to the function named foo, and it seems to even be telling us the file name, which of course it couldn't have been any other file, but when there are multiple files, it's nice that it tells us the file name and the line number in that file where this error first occurred. And it also tells us the, you know, uh, what, you know, function was calling foo, right? So this is basically telling us that main called foo at line 48, and that is the sort of stack trace, uh, you know, from the error. So, you know, what must have happened is that main called foo, uh, foo executed, and then it encountered this error in the execution of foo. That's what this collection of information is all telling us. It's also saying here somewhat like in not just information in the source code about where the error occurred, but this is more information about the memory addresses and the nature of the the error. So in effect, it's saying, you know, this memory address, which I mean, you know, I can't imagine. Well, I don't know. There, there may be some ways in which that would be useful information, but probably for us right now, it's not going to be. But just you know, know that it's saying that there is some memory address zero bytes after a block of size five alloc. So what it seems to be saying is that some block, right, some array of size five was allocated and zero bytes after that, which is to say immediately after that, you know, this address had some value assigned to it. And here is where you can trace the malloc, right? So, you know, if you thought maybe, well, the resolution is then to increase the size of the malloc, right? What, what it sounds like is that we gave something size five, but right after five, we tried to put something there. So maybe what I need to do is malloc more, right? Malloc more space. That, right, that's one resolution. So if you wanted that resolution, then this would be the useful piece of information so that you would know where to go to increase the malloc. And then uh, this is saying, actually, this is the line of code which did the malloc. So let's now put this side by side with the source code uh, if we can sort of use this information. So as we said, there was a write of size one at foo in line 29. So let's go to line 29. Let's see that it is being called inside of a function named foo. Exactly right. That's exactly what's going on. It had passed in this uh, string called str. And then do we have uh, information? I guess on line 29, we can see that it makes an assignment from stir to this array c. Now C is is allotted five, you know, uh, uh, size five, and here we are trying to assign coordinate number five to this variable. So that's very likely the nature of the issue. I guess we could be worried that maybe actually accessing stir at index five. I mean, you know, where is stir? It's being passed in as an argument. So maybe we do want to go and look for, uh, you know, main on line 48 and see if that 
isn't also a problem. So uh, let's see. So let's say 48, right? Yeah, 48, this is where the call to foo is made. S is being passed in. S is malloced eight chars. So in fact, that's basically just a quick demonstration that this is not the issue, right? So it's kind of nice to be able to use this information to see where an issue is occurring and also to you know recognize where an issue is not occurring right so this has eight indices basically you are free to grab any of its eight indices and since that is getting passed in as s therefore that s is what is uh, you know pointing to the same place as stir is and so stir here when we access its index five there's no problem with that. So, you know, effectively, this is just a demonstration that indeed the issue that we saw with, oh, not there, here, the issue that we saw with C is in fact the issue. It has size five, but we're trying to access index five, which doesn't exist. That's the nature of the problem. And if we want, let's just go ahead and, and spot check also that the allocation uh, for this piece of memory was in, uh, you know, uh, line 18 of foo. So where's line 18 of foo? Yep, that is where the issue occurred. And so there's, uh, you know, I'm not sure uh, if there's much more to say about this example. Uh, it's a very, very nice example, Sh really shows you uh, how to use this stuff and so on. But is that the end of the story? By the way, this, right, this whole printout is the mem check tool of Valgrind, right? Valgrind has many tools and the main one, I guess you could say, is the uh, memcheck. And so this, you know, was produced by the memcheck tool in Valgrind. So um, is there anything else to discuss here? So, you know, they had a different uh, process ID. Of course, they're going to have a different one. Uh, every computer is probably going to have a different uh, process ID for any given error, even running the same program. Uh, here's a, a you know a general description of what you see in a uh, memcheck report. It, you know the you see the process ID as we said, the type of error warning, which uh, error or warning, and for us the most useful one was the one where did it go here? So that's that's like just a recognizable common error uh, type. It then tells you where the error occurred in the source code it, uh, in, in, with a stack trace. And then it tells you where the memory issues are in heap space. So that was uh, this uh, stuff about, right? It's like around here. Yeah, yeah, starting here and going out to like about, I guess here uh, is where uh, it was telling you about um, heap space stuff like about like where where the data was malloced and and uh, lines of code where that occurred and so on so yeah i think um yeah i think that's about it so we can end the video there